Hey, welcome back in VIPs at DFSArmy.com. This is your buddy Chop It On. It's the week 14, week 14 NFL rundown. And we're going to dive into receivers, tight ends, and defenses here. Uh, you heard all the stuff before about what we're looking for, why we're looking for it. Hopefully you've seen the cash versus GPP player uh, fundamental reset video that we already did this week. But what we're going to do today is we're going to dive in, round out the rest of our player pool, at least for the, the, the creme de la creme, the best of the best that we're going to be watching for and then hope that our coaches start echoing the same things as we go throughout the week. We'll already have most of our player pool written down on a piece of paper ready to rock and roll. So let's dive in and show you how to find those research, those receivers through research this week. Head into the research station under the NFL tab and open it up. But the first thing you need to do is you need to come down here to this little dude and you need to give him a little click because that's going to pop open this window, which will allow you to actually sort and filter the research uh, research station, the, the, the document, if you will. You're going to click off these two times because you want the main slate on Sunday if you want to follow along with me. Now, if you're going to play the evening games, click off the other games. You can customize this sheet. You can customize this tool to anything that you want. You know, you can play afternoon only. You can play showdowns, and you can look at these and see who's liable to get the action, and that's what's going to help you start narrowing down your picks. Now, when it comes to wide receivers, what we're looking for is we're looking for guys, obviously, who catch the ball a ton. We're looking for guys who get the ball inside the red zone. We don't want somebody who gets targeted in the slot between the 20s and then gets forgotten inside the red zone because we don't get any touchdowns that way. What we want is a little bit of both, but we're also going to target game environments. And two of the game environments that I focus on that do historically lead to receivers having good games, over 27 implied team points and under 18 implied team points. The over 27 self-explanatory. We're always looking for teams to have uh, big outputs and shootouts and everything else. There's a lot of fantasy points that go around in those types of games. But under 18 is also historically shown to be garbage time. And that benefits a wide receiver. Haven't said it for a couple of weeks, but if you remember back, garbage time benefits receivers more than it benefits quarterbacks. Quarterbacks get a point for about every 25 yards passing, about four to six points for a touchdown, depending on the scoring system that you use. However, wide receivers get one point for a reception, maybe half a point, but at least something for receptions. One point for every 10 yards receiving and six points for a touchdown. So let's assume that in garbage time, we go 80 yards and we score. That's like three points and then maybe another, you know, six for the quarterback, maybe another four for the quarterback, three, four, about seven, seven to eight points ish for the quarterback. Not a lot, maybe not even a third of his scoring that he needs to hit value. However, for a receiver, that could include four receptions for, you know, 60 yards and the score, in which case that would be two points on a half point PPR for the reception, six for the 60 yards. That right there is eight points. We've already surpassed the quarterback, throw the tutty on top for another six. You got 14 points in that one drive. Yeah, it'd be great if you stacked the two, but generally speaking, if you can target, you're not wanting to stack, say, the New York Jets quarterback just for garbage time. You want to you want to uh, roster quarterbacks that are in winning situations. You can roster the occasional wide receiver in those situations where garbage time may come in. That's really what you're after, and that's what this will point out. So when we slide over to the right, we don't care about home or road or any of that jazz. You slide over to the right, just sort it, sort it by targets. Bring all the heavy target guys up to the top. These are the guys that I want to talk about. Devontae Adams and down. Down to about, you know, six ish targets. So I've got a lot of guys to choose from here. We could cut it down to seven, down to Chad Hansen who hasn't played very many games, of course, that's why, but he did get targeted in the game that he played. If I come down here and I'm looking largely at these guys on this list, get this back up towards the top, still a big list. There's Devontae Adams at the very top. I can't quite get it there, so we'll have to leave uh, DeMichael Harris in there. But we're looking at the guys that gain a lot of volume. If I come over here and I see the guys that are also getting the points put on them by Vegas this week, guys that are supposed to score points. Devontae Adams, uh, I, I, I'm getting thrown off a little bit here by DeMichael Harris, but uh, DeAndre Hopkins, probably not. Tyreek Hill, yes. Devontae Adams, yes. 
down here, Lockett and Metcalf. Yes, Ridley, probably. Godwin, if he plays. Antonio Brown, A.J. Brown, Corey Davis. You need to look at A.J. Brown and Corey Davis. I, I encourage you to go to the research lab and look at those two game logs of fantasy points produced over the past few weeks, and you tell me which one is more steady than the other. Which one has the floor? Mike Evans. Russell Gage, not terrible, but not great. He's not, you know, he's six targets a game or so, but he doesn't get used much in the red zone. Uh, and then down here with your uh, T.Y. Hilton, Sammy Watkins, if he plays, if he's healthy again, et cetera. And then look down here for somebody like a Terry McLaurin, always on the low side, always sitting in the garbage time uh, slot. We don't have much for uh, some of these guys. Jameson Crowder down here low again. These are the, really and truly, those are the two that I've been using all year. Terry McLaurin and Jameson Crowder. Uh, outside of the middle of the season where Jamison Crowder slacked off a little bit uh, early in the year. Phenomenal garbage time. Phenomenal garbage time. We come down here a little bit more. And that, you know, you don't need to reach too far to the bottom of the barrel. Fulgham, maybe, but probably not. And then you can come back over here really quick and you can start checking some of these red zone numbers. Devonta Adams, of course. Keenan Allen. Tyreek Hill, which is interesting inside the red zone because everybody thinks that he's a deep threat. Uh, Calvin Ridley over Julio Jones has been that way for two years now. Lockett, Metcalf used inside the red zone. Adam Thielen used inside the red zone. These are your guys with floors. Uh, Ayuk, believe it or not, coming on out in San Francisco. Uh, Mike Evans, when he's healthy and playing. Now, he's had a lot of little one- and two-yard touchdown catches, which is interesting. Down here to Emmanuel Sanders, Right. These are guys that are little spot starts. Now, they're getting some of the targets. If you're getting big targets and big red zone work, you're in play. Give me a game when you're supposed to score some points or a game when you're supposed to be sitting in garbage time and you're in play. You're in play for cash games. And that's how you find them. Just that simple. When we cut over to the, the tight ends, we go back now to needing them to be at home, needing them to be favored. Because that tends to work better for tight ends. I don't really understand the reasoning behind it, but it has something to do with game script and game flow. Maybe implied to score a lot of points helps because there's enough touchdowns to go around. Tight end's going to get one or two. Hard to say, but that's where you're going to find when you sort this one out by targets per game because that's still another big, big factor. Sort those targets up to the top, and you've got your Kelsey, Waller, Ingram, a little bit of Ertz, Henry, Hawkinson, etc. These are the guys that you're wanting to put in your games. You want the high total guys like the Kelseys and the Wallers this week. Everyone's going to run back to Darren Waller. Um, not so much a garbage time situation, so I wouldn't be looking at a Dallas Goddard. The down here, Hayden Hurst, Gronkowski. These guys might have decent games. Gronk, Gronk is at home, and he's favored. And he's become the tight end in that offense, five targets per game. Let's go over to the red zone and let's look at who's getting used inside the red zone. Gronk is not necessarily being used in there, not like a Jimmy Graham was, not like a Logan Thomas is. That's a fan duel type of play, more so than a, a PPR DraftKings play, because touchdowns are king over on fan duel. You need those guys getting into the end zone more than you need empty targets and empty receptions. 18-15, uh, Darren Waller, big. And Travis Kelsey, of course. A little bit of Ingram, Hawkinson, of course. These are really the three. you know. And if you go again to the research lab and look up the fantasy point production, you're going to find that TJ Hawkinson has a similar floor to Darren Waller. Great play last week. Didn't work out because Waller smashed. But for $1,000 cheaper, you're getting largely the same. You can't probably get the upside Waller head, but you're getting largely the same floor. For that thousand dollars cheaper, Travis Kelsey's priced above those guys, of course. Logan Thomas might be considered. If we go over here and look at the targets again for a Logan Thomas, that's not good. 3.6 receptions per game, 5.8 targets per game. That's not good. Gets a lot of work inside the red zone, but he's more of a touchdown dependent tight end as opposed to somebody who also has a reception floor. Okay, so I would stick to these guys, generally speaking. Yeah, you can punt to your Ferksers, and you can punt, which I actually believe this week. I believe we were a week early on him. I believe this week will be the week that he has a good game. But you'd save him for tournaments. I know he's dirt cheap, but I'd save him for tournaments because he's he doesn't have a floor. You saw it last week. These guys pop onto the scene. They're the shiny new toy. Everybody's talking about them, and everybody thinks, but they got no track record. You're guessing. We don't want to guess in cash games, period.
You don't want to guess. You want to play what you know, set a high floor, and let everyone else guess. Let everyone else trip over themselves. That's the philosophy of playing it safe in a cash game. If I go to the defense matchups here, this is the part I always get confused, just so you know. But I'm looking for big underdogs. So I can sort this by descending order. And remember, I'm going to be looking at the price of this team over here. But this is the team I'm actually looking for. When I find this team sucks, this is the team we want to play in defense. So I'm looking for low team totals and big underdogs. And when I find that under 18 points and, un and a more than a six-point underdog, these are the two teams I'm going to lock into. New Jersey and Philly suck. Seattle and New Orleans are in the better spots this week, traditionally producing defensive spots. That's it right there. So if I come down here to New Orleans and Seattle, I can see 4,900 and 5,000 on FanDuel, 3,800 and 3,000 on, ooh, 3,000. Is that right on DraftKings? That would be a sexy spot right there. That would be a sexy spot. But that said, these are the teams that we're looking for defensively. And you've got a couple of them to choose from. If you want to come down here a little bit more, you know, maybe you'd look at a KC against Miami, which is interesting. Very interesting. That's largely a high total game with a big spread. I don't know. I don't know. Eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It, more, it feels more GPP to me. Over six points again. Uh, lower points, lower points, lower points. We're getting down to where we're not too favored. Now, you want the big favor. Why? Because that, that shifts the game script in your favor. If your defense has a big lead going in late into the game, of course, the other offense is throwing the ball. Knowing that they're going to be throwing the ball to play catch up, you can pin your ears back and blitz like crazy, put a lot of pressure on it, quarterback, force bad throws, get sacks, maybe some fumbles, whatever. And luckily, you know, if you're really lucky, get that pick six. But the point is, that's the scenario that you're targeting with your defenses. Yeah, in cash games, you can play the cheapest viable defense if you want. But you can also play for a little bit of a floor. You're going to usually pay up to get it. And paying up at defense is not like paying up at other positions. It doesn't typically cost you as much. If I punt Anthony Ferkser last week versus Darren Waller, I have I saved myself $2,500 or whatever. I don't often save $2,000 on defense in uh, in fantasy sports, I, I'm I'm more saving you know 1,500 bucks or so. So you can you you're not using as much of your salary inside the same position when you pay up. Now, again, I'm not saying it's necessarily the right thing to do all the time, but I'm saying it doesn't hurt you that like it does in the other sports in the other positions. I mean, because you're just not paying up all the way. Now that said, your two best spots this week, like it or love it, Seattle and New Orleans. So we've got a few tight ends to look for, the bigs, you know, your Wallers, your Hawkinsons, um, maybe a Logan Thomas, maybe probably, you know, Travis Kelsey type, whatever. Those guys for sure are up there. Logan Thomas may enter the mix. Like I said, I believe tournament-wise, Ferkser might be a, a guy to pay attention to this week because everybody seems to be on him for a week, and then they, oh, that didn't work, and they bail, and then the guy has a big week. That happens an inordinate amount of the time, and there's no rhyme or reason behind it. It's just the way the, the world works. And then over on our, our receiver side, we didn't spot any deeper value at receiver, but we spotted a lot of the guys with the floors that you might use. And if we're looking at those price points, down in here, you might be looking somewhere in the sixth range. Nah, Mari Cooper is not on the slate, obviously. Uh, Tyler Boyd, Jameson Crowder types. These are the guys that are going to free up some money. You get too far down here, now you're starting to gamble a little bit again. But again, I would look at Corey Davis and A.J. Brown. I would look at the difference for 1200 bucks. I think you'll be surprised when you see it in the research lab. And other than that, we're going to be spending up a little bit. I wouldn't spend up into this range up here if I can't get value at running back. But if I can get value at running back, then I might. Generally speaking, I'm looking to spend up at quarterback, up at running back, down at receiver, down at tight end, down at defense. And that's what's going to round out my general. But every week is different. Every week there's a spot or two where something goes a little different than usual. And that's what we use our coaches for. It's what we use our cheat sheets for. And that's what we're going to be looking for in, I guess, the next video is fantasy point per dollar and ownership report. But after that, we'll look for the cheat sheets and we'll look for what our coaches are saying and we'll sort of round out our player pool and maybe even sample, uh, build a sample lineup. That would be kind of fun. We haven't done that all year. So let's do that. Let's plan on doing that. Come back and see me and we'll talk to you guys here uh, later on today, shortly.